records Smell the cover, read all the verses Tell me about your favorites on vinyl and vision Hey folks, thank you for tuning in, episode 77. Very special guest tonight is uh, Gareth Thomas of USA Nails. They currently have a split out with Psychic Graveyard, who is also performing at No Coast Fest 2022. Great talk. Um, don't have a lot of time. This song is very short, so i uh, just like to say thank you very much for tuning in and doing all the things you do with the internet. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, rate, review, find us on social medias and so forth. Just uh, Google our name and you'll find it all, okay? Uh, and thank you very much, folks. Enjoy. Hello. Hey. So how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks very much for having me on. Oh, not a problem. I'm very happy to have you. Uh, I'm actually really looking forward to meeting a lot of new people uh, thanks to the No Coast Fest. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I'm just stoked to be part of the you know in one of the one of the bands playing it because the, the lineup looks so good I, I can't believe we've been asked to do it as well to be honest so yeah it looks great yeah i know um one of the bands that's on the same night that you're playing is actually a psychic graveyard which you guys did recently did a split with yeah that's right yeah i actually uh, have that split Oh, cool. Nice one. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, no problem. And I, I intend to buy more of your records, actually, because, um, but with you being in the UK, it's hard because of the shipping. The shipping sucks, right? It's so expensive. Yeah. Um, well, we do have um, uh, uh, a couple of labels in the US who have been uh, pressing our records there, which um, helps a little bit with distribution. Um, oh, so yeah. Hex uh, Records, who are based out of... Um, portland oregon uh did their own runs for the last two records and then um skin graft obviously uh pressed the psychic graveyard split in the in the states too so hmm. um yeah but uh but i think the stocks in the states are running a bit lower than they are here in europe so um, oh okay might be harder to get hold of <laughs> are you going to be bringing some records with you from the uk uh we'll we'll have some i think um i'm not sure we're going to be able to bring any with us um just because of uh how how much stuff we're going to be allowed to bring but um mm. uh i think our i think we'll have some over there i think our um hex and skin are going to sort us out with with some copies to to sell over there i think so oh great okay yeah we'll we'll have something anyway so yeah yeah, yeah. As long as I get an opportunity, because I've been listening to all of your records, and uh, unfortunately, this split is the only one I have of yours right now. But uh, uh -huh. but all of the albums are are great. I really do like all of them. Thank you, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with any one of them. If or, so, if anyone is listening to you know is, is experiencing you for the first time, and they're like, "Oh, where do I start?" You can start anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But so uh, I wanted to speak with you briefly uh, tonight about um, an album that was important to you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when, when you asked um, when you asked us to do this, I, I had to have a good long think about which record to choose. But um, mm. um, yeah, and part of me is still wondering if I picked the right one for me. But um, but but I like my choice. So yeah. <laughs> And it's too I late like to change it now. So uh... <laughs> <laughs> I like your choice too, actually. I, I did not know the sound. Um, okay. I didn't know anything about them at all, actually. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty cool to experience it. Um, you know, so I started here, obviously, with the record that you chose, Jeopardy, being their debut full length. And um, I, I immediately was uh, kind of mesmerized by it. I was just like, wow, this is like so kind of complex. Like, uh, you know, obviously I, I saw the first things, the first things I saw was, you know, came out in 1980. Um, I saw that it was alternative listed as alternative music, which, you know, from the eighties, okay. from eighties genres. I mean, there's only so much you can grasp by that. <clears throat> um, and, uh, and then the sound of it obviously made me think like I saw that they were a UK band. Yeah. So 
I was just like, okay, this is UK band from the 80s. Um, sounds kind of reminiscent of the new wave in the 80s of uh, what we think of English bands. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Wire, The Cure. Um, yeah. All those, uh, be okay, e Echo and the Bunnymen and yeah, so definitely. forth. And I was just like, okay, yeah, this fits right in there. But why have I never heard of this band? Yeah. And I, I think that's something that's often, um, well, it, it, when when you do see stuff written about this album and, and them in general, they're often sort of touted as uh, a band who were really good, like really had great um, critical responses to, especially the first two records. Um, uh, but yet yeah, they it never uh, they never got the sort of commercial success that yeah that Echo and the Bunnymen or Joy Division did, and it's that they, they I think they fared better on on the continent in in Europe. They have um, um, bigger followings in like the Netherlands and France and stuff, and they and they do in the UK, um, which is uh, which is kind of weird. Um, but they, it, they do seem to be. But it, it's it's a good thing to bond over when you meet someone else who who really digs the the sound because yeah, it doesn't seem like um, there's as many they have as many fans as they should do. But, um, right, right. Yeah. But there and was, it seems there was like a, it's growing, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's. I mean, um, I know a lot of people more my age who are sort of getting into them sort of later now, and and there's a, a film came out. Um, a few years ago now, just sort of an independently financed film about uh, the life of uh, Adrian Ball and the, uh, the guitarist stroke singer, mm -hmm. um, which, uh, which I was lucky to be able to go and see. But, I mean, it was produced by um, a Dutch company. Um, uh, you know, it wasn't... And, and it hasn't hadn't ha been screened that much over here, but um, in Europe, it, it's doing the rounds a bit more at, mu uh, at film festivals and stuff. Mm. um but but yeah but that's um but yeah so they're i think they're big with the you know obviously uh the internet has allowed them to find a a new audience as i guess it has a, a lot of sort of bands um that maybe went under the radar in sort of previous decades right yeah i mm. i mean um you know I'm, I'm kind of fascinated by it because uh because it's new to me you know uh i actually listened to um most of their other records too because uh considering i didn't know them i i started off with this record obviously i listened to it and i was just like okay this is a very cool record i'm uh, i'm very glad that Gar gareth chose this and then um i saw the rest of the discography so i was just like well let me go s see what else they got because you know maybe the rest of it's pretty good and mm -hmm. uh i was not as pleased like it seemed very strange that uh even the record that came after this the um i forget the name of it now uh something uh, about the, the lion's, lion's mouth, mouth. Yeah. yeah yeah um i felt like it, it most of the music most of the progression from that onward seemed to get very poppy yeah so i i mean uh from the lion's mouth is uh for me i it's an amazing record it's um mm. it is the production is slightly better than the, the but i mean the, there's a charm in the sort of lo-fi production of the first record but the second one like sure. it feels like apparently it was there that was the label, I think, saying to them, "Okay, we we need to chuck more at this because you know, critically it did really well, but you know we need to up the production value and stuff." But it still didn't really have not break through. So, but then on the third record, um, uh, I think, well, legend has it that they um, were asked to do a really, really commercial sounding record, mm -hmm. and they so they did the opposite. Uh, uh, because they, in a big sort of fuck you to the label, they were like, they kind of knew they were going to get dropped anyway. So they made, um, I mean, by, by, it, you know, if you listen to like Wolf Eyes or Boredoms or whatever, it doesn't sound that noisy. But compared to like, you know, being on a subsidiary of Warner and try, like that, that third record has some really weird ideas on it and some mm. purposely sort of very obtuse things on it. Sure, Which, and at that time in the eighties, early eighties, yeah, um, it sort of took them. Yeah, it was a it was a sort of commercial suicide record, but it's got some great songs on it as well, and some and the weird noise bits kind of almost elevate it a bit. But, um, but yeah, um, I, I'll be honest. Like the the latter albums, 
I don't I don't know as, as well at all. I've not listened to them uh, as much as sort of the first three. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but as you say, they they don't really they, there's not as much about them that that sort of captures the imagination as the the sort of earlier records as the as the cliche goes. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, I, I, I would like to give it another listen. You know, I mean, I haven't had too much time. And so I just kind of started there. Just what I saw on the page. I was just like, let me just listen to the rest of these, at least like, you know, good sections of it. Most most of the full albums. But um, that was just my initial impression. You know, sometimes give something another listen and you'll get something else out of it. And mm. Then I started obviously doing some research and reading about uh, the lead singer Adrian Borland and uh, and a little bit of history of the, of the band. So I'd like to actually get to know you a little bit better because uh, I am not familiar with you. I mean, I, I obviously I know your band a little bit. Um, I love the the new record, the new split with uh, Second Graveyard is great, and most of your like all the other records that I've listened to are also on the same wavelength. It's the same par, you know. It's like it's good noise rock music. Cool. Thanks, man. Um, so you're from the UK. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, I Born know. And raised. We, yeah, um, yeah. All, all of us. I mean, I know our name might make people think that we're <laughs> American. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're American band, but uh, we're just named after a nail bar in just somewhere in East London. But mm. but I since I found out there was a band called French Nails uh, who were German. Uh, oh. So, and and obviously you've got nails who are just nails, and they're American. So you know it, oh. it's fine. Every everyone's doing yeah. the confusing. It's not just us. Oh yeah, yeah. It, you're adding to the <laughs> mythology, the mythology yeah, yeah. of anything that has to do with uh, ops, opposite uh, origins, country yeah. origins. <laughs> but uh, so so you grew up in where London or what? What city are you in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, I've, I've, yeah, I've been here my my whole life. Um, the the rest of the boys are, uh, well, Tom is from Brighton on the south coast. Stephen is from sort of Manchester area uh, up north originally. He's uh, he's recently moved back there actually, which is um, means that it's uh, we're having to experiment with some new ways of writing at the moment. Um, mm. Not all being in the same city. Sure. Um, but D Dan is from the Midlands, but yeah, we all for the for the most part we um we've been a London based band. Um oh. yeah. Okay. And uh what is your I can't help but to think, you know, you kind of look like me. Where where where, <laughs> where... <laughs> uh, uh my mum is from the Philippines, uh so that gives me a bit of uh um my yeah, a, 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 a different look um, exotic, my dad, exotic look an exotic look yeah, yeah. my dad is fr from wales so that's less exotic but um but yeah but that's but that's what, what about you what is, what are you what is your uh... i'm actually bolivian oh wow okay yeah, cool. 100 percent bolivian as far as i can tell bolivian. yeah cool. it's weird cool all right yeah. nice. both of my parents actually came from there like i i guess mm -hmm. i am what first generation because i i was actually born here in uh the united states and in rhode island uh-huh uh-huh okay so, cool, yeah, but I just thought that's weird. I mean, I get I get stuff like that all the time because I don't look Bolivian necessarily, right? Right. So I, I, I get con I get confused for a lot of different things, and so. Oh, me too. I, I kind of where wherever I go, uh, people tend to think that's where I'm from. So I'll, I'll get spoken to in uh, in Spanish when I'm in Spain, or mm -hmm. uh, in French, uh, Italian when I'm in Italy, or. Um, yeah, it's weird that people have trouble pigeonholing my uh, ethnicity. So. Yeah, right. That, that's that's all right. I don't mind being <laughs> yeah being unique, it's different. Kind of, yeah, it's wild. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I kind of used to hate it as a kid, but but now I, now I really like it. So yeah, yeah. It's all come back around. It's all good. I, I hear you. I agree with you. So um, now I was asking you about this record. Um, I said that how when I first saw it. It was categorized as alternative. What mm. do you consider it to be? Like, how, how, what's its impression with you? I mean, it's it, it's a it's a post punk record. It's a sort of gothic post punk mm. record. Maybe, yeah, a bit a bit new wave. The synth work in it sort of pushes it more in that in that new wave direction. But they, but um, I think 
maybe one other member of the sound in that in the original lineup was in a band with Adrian Ball and previous uh oh yeah the uh, outsiders the outsiders yeah yeah um and they were a pretty much straight up sort of punk band so so I, I kind of yeah. think about them in, in the context of that um in in the context of that band and that and that record um which some people as well claim is like the first DIY record which I don't know uh that's it's quite a quite a, a bold claim to make I mean yeah um, but this record, it was Jeopardy. Uh, no, um, the Outsiders. The Outsiders album, record, okay. that was recorded before. Um, so, but you know that sort of mythology as well. That sort of appeals to me as well. But because hmm. um, I mean, I, I didn't find out about the record about um, the the first time I heard Jeopardy. I was in, uh, I was on tour in France, and we were staying at a promoter's house, and he put this record on, and my ears pricked up straight away, and I was like, oh, who's this? And he was like, oh, it's the sound. Had a look at the record. I was like, oh, never heard of these before. Went back home, checked them out, did a bit of reading up, and found out that they were kind of from the same area of London as as I was from, sort of southwest, sort of London. Hmm. And in fact, they'd even Adrian Bourne had. Um, I lived opposite the school that he'd went to, the, like the high school that he went to, which is a, a bit random and weird. But um, oh, yeah, wow. But yeah, but then to hear like, oh wow, and they recorded that Outsiders record in his house like his dad who was didn't really know what he was doing just uh, and, and he, they talk about it in the film as well they interview uh, Adrian Borland's dad and he talks about how he had it all set up in the house and hmm. and how they just recorded it themselves and just got all the equipment from wherever and and sort of worked it out as they went along but um yeah so I quite like that sort of yeah it's like I mean, local it's like right there yeah. like you're in it like to know that you know and when in that band i was touring was a proper sort of diy kind of hardcore band i just love the idea that wow potentially this album that has the claim to be the first ever sort of diy record or whatever was yeah. was recorded around here around me i was like that's pretty cool so yeah that i mean yeah it just added to to the sort of um to my intrigue and, and my interest in them so yeah hmm. yeah weird so um you heard this for the first time on tour in 2015 did you say or what year was it oh uh ooh, i'm not sure maybe a bit longer ago maybe more like 2010 11 something like that oh, okay um yeah but like, like i was saying before they are they were more popular on the continent so right it stan stands to reason that it would be over there that i would find out about them but, um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I, I had to go all the way to France to find out about a band that were from <laughs> my local area. So right, yeah. it was right in your backyard, practically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so how it's weird how things work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I was asking you about what you consider this music to be uh, genre wise, because uh, genre is kind of like this weird thing for me right now. Like it's very intriguing because uh, you know we we we're talking pretty much because of uh, No Coast Fest which you are going to be participating in, and I'm actually going to be there as well. <clears throat> and uh, and I'm a big fan of noise rock music, and that's what it's this lit, this festival is billed as. It's billed as a no, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, no, uh, noise rock festival. Like, what is noise rock to you? Oof. Well, I guess it's quite a broad genre, isn't it, these days? But Yeah, I mean, because um... like, I've been listening to the bands that are on the bill, you know, some of them, and they're, a lot of times, they're very different. Mm, mm. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard to it's hard to sort of characterize, isn't it? Because yeah, like you say, there's there's a lot. It can cover a lot of different things. Um, right. I mean, that you can there's certain things you could pick that are elements that are common in in noise rock bands. Sure, probably. Um, I don't know. Vocals are. It's not much singing, is there? <laughs> not but, melody uh, per se. No, no, but, not, yeah. not 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 so much melody in the vocals. You might say that um, the something that always stands out to me is that there's a, there's a certain tone on on the bass guitar, which is very much that um, that oh, Bob yeah. Weston, uh, yeah, that Jesus very trebly, sort of sound. High, yeah. yeah, that really clangy, almost sounds like a piano, almost you know that really. Mm. Um, uh lots of lots of high mids so it really sort of cuts through and then but but i don't know it, it covers so many different um 
different things. I mean, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't know yeah. if we a, a strictly noise rock, but if people want to call us, that's fine by me. But um, yeah, uh, well, I was going to ask you, like, what? How do you? How do you define your band, USA Nails? Uh, I mean, I, I guess. I mean, it's what you're saying. It's quite interesting about a genre, isn't it? That the mm. that it can almost it can almost a term can be so broad that it almost becomes a bit meaningless, doesn't it? And um, but I mean, our, our reference points are are sort of post punk bands of the '80s: Wire, Devo, um, uh, um, Gang of Four. Um, but then I suppose maybe sort of more grungy elements mixed in with that as well. Um, Hot sure. Snakes, you know, yeah. Mets were a band that, you know, that, you know, the first time I heard Mets, I was sort of blown away. Um, hmm. um, uh, but yeah, um, I'm not sure. I, <laughs> it's a hard question to answer. I don't really yeah. know how, how I would define it. I could, I could, Easily, but, like I mean, like yeah, pick out elements or bands that I'd say that's that's a noise rock band. But yeah, do you consider uh, do, USA Nails to be a noise rock band? Um, sure. Yeah, why not? I mean, <laughs> if people want to call us that. I'm I'm happy to go with that. Uh, if yeah. it helps people understand what we're doing, I'm I'm happy to with that label. Yeah, yeah. Um, and huh. it puts us under an umbrella with lots of cool bands that I like. So that's that's fine right. with me. Yeah, I mean, so what? Well, what is like the noise rock music scene in in London right now? Uh, in I'm London, imagining you have contemporaries, right? You have like peers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. There's a lot of again. I don't know if they would like to be, uh, you know, furnished with that with that label. But there's there's a lot of cool sort of noisy non melody. Uh, vocals, heavy bass guitar sort of uh, bands coming out of London. I think, I mean, like going back, a, I mean, th there's so many that, that I dig, but like the sort of more legendary ones are maybe like Part Chimp um, mm -hmm. or uh, uh, Hey Colossus, who aren't really based in, in London anymore, but they're kind of a, they'll always be a London man to me. Um, okay. Um, Further afield in the UK, I suppose Nod are uh, um, do do quite well here in the. I mean, I have no idea what what level of popularity any of these bands have in in the states and and beyond. Um, sure, I, I know they're big here and in in Europe, but um, I'm not sure any of them have really toured that extensively in uh, in America or or had US labels work with them. But, okay. Uh, um but yeah there's there's loads of really cool smaller bands like um i i, I used to be in a band called silent front who and the uh and the singer from that band phil has has formed a a new uh, an amazing noise rock band called x doubt who uh and they they have a trumpet player and, and he does sort of like noise manipulation as well and it gives it a mm. whole i mean yeah that's it i mean you can have trumpet too and that's still noise rock so you know sure uh, um yeah um modern technology human leather i mean yeah i could i could just list loads of bands i suppose that okay i would i would loosely uh uh sort of group under that term but yeah but there's right. there's a there's a lot going on there's uh, yeah. yeah there's certainly a lot um okay yeah of that ilk yeah that's great all right so that that uh that's something to look forward to kind of something to for me to mill over and maybe like uh, go explore some of these bands and uh and hear about them because i'm sure the benefit to living in today's time <clears throat> is that you just give me that name and I can probably find those bands. I can probably find a way to listen to it somehow. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So uh, that's great. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, now you were saying something about like some of those bands, you don't know how far their reach is, like whether they took, you know, toured the U S or anything like that. And, and that's also kind of funny, kind of ties into the band, the sound because uh, you know, they don't exist anymore, but, even at the time when they were come where when they were relative and, and actually working, the you know, their their notoriety had kind of gone under the radar, kind of like very little little uh what's the word for that? Little attention for them, I guess. Mm, mm. Um you know, and they were on a label, as you said, a subs uh subsidiary of uh Warner Brothers, Cor Corova. 
mm. um, which was the also the home of Echo and the Bunnymen. So, mm. you know, obviously a pretty big thing. So it's peculiar why like any band or any album kind of falls through these cracks. But do you have any opinion as to like why that could happen to a band? Like maybe even, you know, just today in your own time, I'm not asking you to speak about the eighties cause you know, you weren't mm. making music then. Um, but what good bands that fall through the cracks? I mean, yeah. it, it, it can be any number of things, I suppose. I mean, right. there's the, I mean, to some extent, there's a game you've got to play if you want to, if you want to want people to to hear your band. You know, it, it, it's it's all being good will get you so far. Mm, you have um, to be willing to shamelessly promote. <laughs> <laughs> um, in a way, or or just you know, meeting the right people and and mm. being at the right place at the right time, doing the right thing at the right time. Um, Which you have no idea, though. You don't know if you're doing that. <laughs> Well, well, that's it. I mean, and, and, and some bands, you know, seem to would be doing what they're doing anyway. And it just happens to resonate at a particular moment in time. And, and that might be something that gets picked up. But if they'd been a couple of years later, maybe it would have been a different story. But, hmm. um, but yeah, there's, there's certainly a lot of elements, I suppose, isn't there, to, to sort of being successful. And, um, a lot of it is 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 knowing the right people i think unfortunately i mean i think that goes for sure. the same in 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 any industry not just in music um right but um but you know knowing the right promoters and not not to say that that's a, a a dirty game to play or whatever i mean it's just like if you happen to be friends with the people that that are putting on the touring bands and you know they know that you're a decent person or a decent band and you're reliable um right. then you know you're you're more likely to get booked for that show than just some unknown quantity um um right but yeah it's hard i mean if i knew exactly w what it was then i maybe i'd be <laughs> doing, be doing music <laughs> for a living so <laughs> yeah if i really right. did know the answer to that question but um uh, yeah, well, there's no right or wrong answer, you know. I mean, I, I think mostly it's kind of like whatever you get from your own experience, you know. Now that you're you're doing it, you're living in that. Mm, mm. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, and it, it depends what you define as sort of success or what your goals are, I suppose, as well. I mean, if um, yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Because I mean, would you be happy with a, a a kind of career similar to Adrian Borland? I mean, obviously, I'm not asking. I'm not saying that you're suicidal, and I hope that you're not, and I hope that that doesn't happen. But I mean, you know, uh, relatively unknown uh, mainstream success, but you have like, but having an underground following where there are people that constantly find your music and and really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd be happy with that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that more people will uh, will know about the sound than will ever know about any of my bands, probably. But um. Yeah, you never uh, know, man. Maybe. Well, maybe, not. maybe, maybe in <laughs> in forty years' time, someone will be having this conversation of, about uh, about one names. of our albums. Maybe not. <laughs> we'll uh, see. Yeah, maybe it would be cool. Um, but um, yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the state of things at, at the you know, if you, if you're lucky enough to be able to do music and, and not have to rely on it as uh, you know to have the time to do it. And to do it in a way you want to do it without having the pressures of it, you know, paying your rent or paying your mortgage. That can also, you know, for some people, that's that is success. Like I get to oh, do yeah. exactly what I want to, and uh, I don't have to worry about being right. it being commercially viable because I've got a job. So you know, um, right. So yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's a funny one, but but yeah, I I would. I mean, in theory, yeah, the idea of being able to make a living from doing music and having that level of recognition would be great. But to be honest, if I, if I had it, I'd probably find something to complain about anyway. So sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's always something to complain about, but I mean, yeah. as long as I, I would love to see that, I would love to see that you end up in that position where you're right, where you want to be complaints cool. and all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks. Yeah. Hey. Um. So one, one fact I found out about this record was that, uh, it only costs 800 pounds to, to record. 
great. Wow, yeah. Uh, I didn't know that, but um, yeah, I guess I guess that makes sense. I mean, it does feel the sound of it is a little strange, a little bit off in places and, and a bit lo-fi, so it kind of mm -hmm. makes sense that they... Yeah, I remember it reading about you know they weren't given that much of a budget for it um that's not so, much is it i mean how much no. is that you know comparatively would you think uh cool well, so that what was that like early early 80s 79 i, I imagine if it came out in 80 yeah i mean yeah I, I don't really know how how much inflation would affect that figure now but right. i mean i mean for a band signed to a label like that you know, a sub not a major, but a subsidiary of one. You'd expect a bigger budget than that. Um, sure. I mean, that, but, uh, for me, that sounds like it's pretty minuscule. Mm, I mean, we, <laughs> we, mm, actually, I don't know. Once you add it all up together, you know, our, our budget for recording is, is more than that, but not much more than that. I don't think. Yeah. Fair <laughs> um, but but um, but you know we're a different quantity. We're we pay. For, you know we don't have a, a label advance to pay for recording. And uh, right, right. How, how is your recording process? You do it all yourselves? Uh, no, we. Uh, so we've worked with um, the same producer for um, on all on all the records that we've on all the albums that we've recorded. Some of the EPs we've we've done ourselves, but um, and the odd tracks here and there. But um, uh wayne adams is his name he run, runs his own studio in in east london but he's um sort of he seems to be a kind of go-to person for any sort of noisy guitar or like he does he does a lot of guitar bands but he's like um his background is sort of in electronic music in breakcore and gabba yeah. and stuff and so he's got some crazy uh, synth projects as well as like doing sort of pretty um sort of heavy bands stuff as well but um but yeah he's uh he's kind of our george martin if you like you know he's <laughs> he's very much a producer not not an engineer with us like it's um and you know we really sort of value his input on um on on the records like he's hmm. yeah i mean i think he's kind of a big part of our sound we we owe to to wayne i think um all right yeah yeah um yeah yeah so yeah he's he's he's, he's a sort of an important part of of us like cool yeah. that's great um yeah the so i i found this quote from uh, michael dudley the uh, drummer from the album <clears throat> okay and uh, he said that uh the quote is, I felt I had really achieved something in my life. I couldn't wait to hand out copies to friends and family. It was the most fun to record and the biggest challenge to work on in the studio of all the Sounds albums. So with this quote being uh, and in consideration, uh, what album in your discography might you hold in the same esteem? Uh, that I've recorded. Yes, and I'm your proud own album. Of. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, okay. Good, uh, good question. Um... Um, oh, that's hard. That's hard. Uh, I mean, are you are you excited about every all of them? Like every time you have a record coming out, you're excited to bring it to your parents and your family and friends. I, it's more to be honest. I feel I get. I feel I I, I have them. I know better what I feel about a record after a few years. Mm -hmm. I feel like straight after I've recorded something, uh it's not a very reliable feeling that I have about it in, you know, in terms of how I end up feeling about it sort of further down the line. Um, so, cause often if, if you've been spending a lot of time writing and listening and mixing, just end up a little bit too close to it to have a, mm -hmm. <laughs> a reliable sort of opinion on it, I think. Um, so I, in the way that you know he's he's like he comes straight out of the studio and was like yes this is something i want to play to my family and friends i don't think i've ever felt that about any record i've been involved with but as years have, have passed i've like thought you know what actually with a bit of distance this is, this is a pretty good record i think we did a good job on this one um mm. i think i mean the album that of ours that um well not everyone but a lot of people say is their favorite is is the second record no pleasure 
And okay. I listen, I listen back to that, and I'm like, yeah, that is that's kind of cool because the the first record was quite quite different um, to to where we ended up going, um, but the second album was where we sort of I think figured out where we needed to what kind of band we were mm-hmm. uh um and i mean I, I like all of our records i'm pleased with with everything that we've done but there's maybe it's the tours we did around that time as well and I was just a bit younger <laughs> <laughs> and so i have so i have some f- fond memories of that um yeah um but well, yeah that, but it, that's funny that your audience like kind of that's that's their impression that's like that's one of your your better records as well like obviously it hits a certain uh you know has a certain impact on a good mm. number of people i would imagine mm. and, uh, yeah. and that, that is a good record i have been listening to that one too uh as was long along with uh sonic moist and uh, life cinema and character stop all the other records i've listened to all of them so yeah and like i said i think that they're all great i think they all obviously have a certain um a certain mystique about them you know like like uh as a as a outsider listening to all of this stuff like you know pretty much for the first time um i think that it's uh it, it certainly is intriguing if you like noise rock music quote unquote noise rock and if you like you know hard-edged uh aggressive music uh all of the records still fall into that category they're like none of them are like way out like none of them are like a huge departure they're all still mm. within this realm so with that being said, how, how are you feeling about your, your next outing? Like, uh, like the next record that might be coming? Uh, what well, we've, we've got, um, the next album recorded. In fact, we've just sent it for mastering. So, oh, great. um, so, and it was, so as I mentioned before, Stephen has moved, um, to Manchester. So we weren't the, the way that we used to, um, for like the first, Five albums plus splits and EPs or whatever. We'd always write in the room. That was kind of that was kind of always what was exciting about the about mm. about the approach of the band. It was very uh, instinctive and very immediate. And come away from practice with like two or three songs almost written, like, sure. um, and be churning out lots of ideas, ditching a lot, churning out a lot more. And so we're kind of experimenting with the with the new record. Uh, I mean, people might listen to it and just think, "Oh, it just sounds the same as all the other ones." <laughs> but the approach was uh, was kind of different um, because some of the songs were pre-written before Stephen moved away. Some of them were half-written, um, and the, 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 the so the new album is is the first record where we haven't tried to do it live. Um, hmm. Everything I don't know for for a long for the longest time we sort of almost just thought never gave it two thoughts it was just like no records our records are recorded live that's how usa and l's records are recorded but True. when it came to the, the new one it was like no we're going to need a bit more flexibility um because stephen hadn't written his parts at the time that we were recording we were writing these we demoed we sent some demos back and forth but we were um we knew that what we were recording wasn't necessarily going to be the finished version. So we ne- wanted to sort of track everything separately and kind of yeah. write while, um, while recording and sending it back and forth to Stephen and, um, and him adding his bits. So, but maybe, I don't know, <laughs> the result maybe isn't, we weren't trying to make a different sounding you know we weren't aiming for something that's a huge departure from from what we've done before mm-hmm. um um so I, I don't know um like i've said like about all the records that i've ever recorded i've never never really tr- trust my immediate thoughts on it after sort of finishing with recording it mm. um i like it there's there's you know good songs in it um it's just a bit different. I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how it, it goes down, really. Um, sure. We've already had thoughts about how to do the next record, but really getting ahead of ourselves now. I mean, <laughs> this. so we only just released the split a couple of 
months ago so the next yeah. album probably won't be although it's being mastered now probably won't be released until next spring especially with vinyl lead times as long right. as they are at the moment yeah um but the next one we think so we also got asked to write a song for um oh almost i'm, I'm not going to say <laughs> give too you much can't away say but, it. okay uh, but uh <laughs> but we we we've for the first time ever we've written a song like completely remotely um where it was drums recorded sent up to Stephen, he recorded his bits moved around some of the drums sent them back mm. we recorded more bits down here and I, I i've always felt like i never wanted to be wanted usa nails to be a a band that worked like that because that to me just sounded knackering and boring mm. like what was fun about it was the social side being in a room uh you know, having a few drinks, having some laughs, like with with three friends, four friends all together. Right. Not that I, I I don't drink anymore, but but still, the principles the same. But yeah, um, and so the idea of doing it remotely. But then we did this song remotely because we were because we had to do a song for something that will become clear at some point. But um, and actually, we all kind of really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another different way of working. I mean, we're just still working, feeling our way through about like how. Sure. Uh, you know how things are going to work in future, but right. But well, we've I'm, said, and I'm we... sure that the pandemic kind of had an influence on that as well, because uh, you know, mm. I'm sure you didn't want to be stagnant for that entire time, considering we didn't even know how long it was going to last, and it's still not even completely over. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, very much so. I mean, that was something. I mean, strangely, we didn't start writing remotely until until after the sort of time when you know when it would have been per perfectly fine for us to go into a sheet or something but but yeah, yeah. um but we, we'd sort of experimented with it over the pandemic and we wrote we did a couple of like little covers eps where we just all recorded our own stuff and but it was mm. it's nothing like sort of not a proper sort of record but right. but yeah but but i guess forcing yourself to do things in different ways can can be quite fruitful can't it? and sort of result in if it works out things. yeah yeah, I mean, if, yeah. You know, it seems that what you're saying is that it has worked out for the new record so that's that's great i hope so i hope i hope everyone thinks that hears it thinks that <laughs> yeah well maybe they won't even know they'll be like oh it sounds like another usa nails oh record. it sounds fine it's not <laughs> one of those live usa nails records right yeah. yeah all right well um so i i um i want to talk a little bit more about this record but i'm not going to do the full treatment okay so the first song on the record is called I Can't Escape Myself. Um, yeah. So what, what, what? now you put this record on, right? Now, the first time you said you heard it was in France on tour. Mm. So this song comes on. What what happens to you? Um, I can't I can't I mean, I, it's, it's hard to remember my my sort of first reaction on hearing it other than you know, it was something that I was definitely very interested in, but yeah, it's quite, uh, every time I put this record on now, like it's, it feels like a really, it's a really iconic to me. It feels iconic, like opening the way it sort of fades in to that first sort of bit. Sure. And it's almost like it, it's their sort of, it's their first track, but on the, on the first record, but it's, um, it says it almost tells you I don't, I don't want to sort of make him seem really one dimensional but it tells you a lot about what you need to know about adrian Borland and how troubled he was like sure yeah and, no and i picked that i picked that up immediately yeah and it's i mean it's 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 so his story is so tragic obviously but you know and and the fact that the first like he he sort of captures that within the sort of first few minutes of their first album is is mm. i mean it's it's really haunting isn't it and it's really but it's really sure. sort of cap captivating um like and you know he, he really fucking means it obviously like um <laughs> yeah. You, yeah i mean it's kind of obvious it's pretty pretty self-explanatory like what the, what the song's about but um right but yeah it, it's just it still sends chills down my spine like that the way that song opens in it just a, um, just an idea for for some of the listeners i mean so a, a very small sample of the first verse of lyrics says uh, so many feelings pent up in here left all alone i'm with the one i most fear 
I'm yeah. sick and I'm tired of reasoning. Just want to break out, shake off this skin. So, yeah, I mean, like you're saying, it's pretty evident to just listen to the first song and just be like, this guy sounds really fucking depressed. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and that's he was. It. You know, he, he yeah. certainly had some illnesses. I mean, some kind of mental illness. I'm not sure exactly what, but he sort of definitely suffered from depression. Mm -hmm. um, how, how are you, Gareth? How am I? Well, I mean, um, I'm okay. I, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I suffer with anxiety and depression as well, uh, mm -hmm. mate. So, um, you know, this maybe that's one of the reasons why this sort of band uh, resonates with me as well. And like, is not that I would ever sort of compare, you know, what I have to go through with, you know, what, whatever uh, Adrian Vaughan might have. But I don't know. It's uh, it's not you completely can, you unrelatable level. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you've yeah. had you've had depressive tendencies. You've had like moments of uh, depression and so forth. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've uh, I've um, I'm, I'm still on antidepressant medication now, and um, yeah. Uh, so you know, I I, I get it, I, and um, yeah, it it resonates definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But and and same with me. I mean, I I'm not on any medication, but I definitely feel and I know that I've had have been for a long time like ever since my teens I, I know that I've always had depressive tendencies um and I have my moments but uh as of right now things are okay you know things seem seem all right good so good. that's all that's all we can hope for really yeah that's it that's it <laughs> um now uh the next song is heartland mm. um I, I didn't really know what to think of this song I started kind of listening deeply uh, a couple a couple times, and it seems to be fairly straightforward. Um, still in the same vein of like this guy that is troubled, uh, he has issues, he has uh, you know kind of anxiety and depression depression issues, and it seems that he's very stressed out about where he lives. But yet, the, yet at the same time, this song is called Heartland. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not really sure I even know what this song is about, but mm. it's it, it's a ripper. <laughs> it's, it's great. I mean, like the it the first good. track is obviously really brooding, isn't it? And then it sort of kicks into this and that sort of synth line over the sort of that lead uh, synth line is just just carries the whole thing, and it's it's really sort of upbeat. I mean, it might be quite down. I mean, down in terms of the lyrical content, but. Right. But there's there's like a, a feeling of like hope in it, I suppose about about um yeah I'm I'm not sure I'm I'm not I'm not sure entirely if it, it feels a bit ambiguous to me but uh, mm -hmm. I've never really sat there with the lyric sheet and sort of analysed it but I mean one I think maybe it was that track on the first listen that really um, popped that really captured me yeah yeah it was it's uh it's it's uh, I mean maybe on repeat listens it's not it doesn't hold as much um weight as some of the other tunes but definitely it's it sort of grabbed me very much like the yeah. first time uh like in you know when i when i started listening to that record yeah 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 no i agree with it i mean it um you know i mean like thinking about the lyrics again just kind of just to touch on them briefly i don't really want to get too crazy into it but um mm. You know that we there's the comparison obviously that's made between this band and many other English bands, but one of them specifically being Joint Division. Um, I, I don't get it, man. I can't believe that like this isn't like really like right there on par with where Joy Division ended up and and kind of in that canon of like you know uh, essential English new wave music, uh, especially because it's a, it's so depressing. You know, and Joy Joy Division <laughs> is is immensely depressing i mean like mm. i think anyone that listens to joy division will probably say that's just like oh yeah it's like what i listen to when i get in those moods mm. <laughs> yeah i mean what one of, i mean obviously i love this record but one of the things that did make me think well maybe some of the lyrics are a bit more on the nose than than maybe sure. echo and the bunny men or, or joy division and and maybe Maybe that's why in continental Europe, where you know people speak English as a second language, and like you know the idea that the ideas are communicated quite clearly mm -hmm. is 
makes it more popular over there. But over here, because maybe people like things a bit more obtuse and a bit more cryptic, I don't know. Um, and it's maybe a bit um, a bit too clear <laughs> sometimes what what's being said. Mm. And maybe I don't know. I don't know. It was just uh, just the thought that I had that maybe that was one of the things that that sort of held it back that it was a bit too his heart really was on his sleeve with it mm. a lot of the time there was no it wasn't really um uh, much sort of hiding behind um floral language or or metaphors or anything it was really sure. it's really all sort of out there isn't it so yeah well yeah. i'll tell you that yeah. i think for this record specifically you know i didn't listen to the other ones very very thoroughly as i did to, for this one i think the first three songs are definitely kind of like what you're talking about where it's like very on the nose very much like oh this is a depressing record and you can kind of hear this guy kind of bearing his soul through through mm. through the lyrics <clears throat> but then as you move down uh particularly on the second side i feel i feel like it's a lot more broad content lyrically speaking like it's not mm -hmm. like he's focused on on just kind of how depressed he is but more of a worldview type of thing so we'll move on to the to the song missiles yeah or as he pronounces it missiles missiles yeah i mean yeah that's i think that's that's the english pronunciation of that one. right that's what we, I were, we were we were yeah missile yeah we'd say missile but but yeah that one's uh obviously a bit more sort of uh a broadly political song uh, yeah i guess or I maybe so. reflect reflecting on um uh who's the who's the german guy that helped design the atom bomb My, oh, he, von, von Braun? oh oppenheimer was that, I, 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 i'm not sure i'm not sure but but there's been i've listened to a few podcasts about about that sort of thing about the people and the tech behind uh you know people whose technology becomes um or uh whose advances are then sort of subverted into use by sort of the military and stuff and like where that leaves them sort of morally. So I, I don't know if it's mm. more about that or if it's more just more just a comment on on more just an anti war song, I suppose. But Yeah. Um, yeah, right. I mean yeah. it's not something that I think about too often as far as this like, you know, what what songs in my discography you know, our, our war songs or war protest songs in general. But, uh, mm -hmm. but this one kind of really hits on it pretty heavily. Um, you know, I think it, it asks the obvious question, who, who the hell makes those when they know what they can do? Mm -hmm. And it's true. I mean, it, it's, it's a, it's a very, um, moral question, I guess, to ask is this like, well, why, why do we even create these weapons of mass destruction? Yeah. Um, or I just had a thought there. Maybe it's um, uh, is it uh, in Clerks? They have that conversation about the people that work on the Death Star, and they're like, "Well, you know, they've got no morals. That they've chosen to work on the Death Star, and they know they deserve to die because you know they they picked to work right. for a uh, uh, you know an evil empire. Um, empire. So yeah. yeah. So that you know. So maybe it's something like that, but maybe Clerks was inspired. That that little skit was inspired by this song. You know, yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah, Kevin Smith's be. a massive sound fan. You never know. <laughs> he <not>. could be. But... <laughs> yeah, I think that's funny. But I mean, because and so I was thinking about it because I mean, obviously, I mean, being anti-war is not a uh, crazy ideology to have. I mean, but I was thinking that um, Adrian Borland, being uh, British. But little, little uh, younger than the dinosaurs. Uh, so he was born in '57, and I did mm -hmm. a little bit of research. Turns out, like a lot of the, a lot of the British invasion rock and roll musicians, you know, like the Who and um, <clears throat> the the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, they were uh, born in like the, um, I believe in like the '40s, right? Okay, yeah, late '40s. No, mm -hmm. yeah, no, late '40s, I think. So yeah, they were of that generation where they, growing up as children were kind of like witness to the fallout of uh, post World War II, right? Mm -hmm. And and you know, England, London specifically, I guess, had suffered a lot of uh, you know, uh damage and destruction from the war. Mm -hmm. And so there you know, these kids were growing up in like a post war post war um environment where they see things that are, you know, just blown just completely leveled and so forth. Um, I don't know if he was experiencing that because of he, he was being just like the slightly later generation, 
yeah, I'm not sure what um what could have been the sort of the thing you know if there was a single thing that really uh, inspired that maybe maybe just the Cold War in general. Um, oh yeah, sure. Um, would that would sort of make sense, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, that would be kind of more of a modern take on that song and kind of inspiration mm, for it. Mm, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with that Cold War. Yeah. Okay. Right. And yeah. and how and I suppose that you are probably anti-war, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. Um, so then, yeah, like I like I said, uh, just moving on to the second side of the record, the the B side. Um, great, great songs. Um, just it doesn't seem seems more more worldly. Just kind of not as pigeonholed into this kind of depressive content it's kind of uh you know the first song on the second side being hey day mm -hmm. yeah that's that's quite an upbeat sort of yeah. uh, number isn't it um maybe the sort of more like a sort of bit like heartland i suppose in terms of it's sort of like as, yeah. as up tempo as they get really um um again i've never really never really taken time to think about the lyrics for this one i'm just looking at them now actually but um hmm. Yeah. So no, it feels like it's a, a letter to someone kind of specific. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. It, it is a bit more cryptic that one. So maybe uh, yeah. maybe I should take take back what I said about it being, the lyrics being quite on the nose with, with the sound in general. But well, well, I think some of them certainly are. But uh, mm -hmm. but this one and then like the other ones, you know, Jeopardy, Night versus Day. Mm. resistance seems a little on the nose <clears throat> yeah yeah but uh yeah. but even that you've uh the next one under in law and then ending the album with the, the song desire mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah i think uh they're pretty yeah they're pretty out there you know just kind of very wide swath of kind of content mm. Mm. yeah yeah true true so now like i said i didn't want to get too crazy into this album like i usually do but mm -hmm. um what uh i'm curious what what are your plans for october because you're, you're doing the no to no coast fest and mm -hmm. i imagine you're doing some other dates in the states we're uh yeah we're trying to we are uh booking some shows leading up to it um but we once those are firmed up a bit more we'll we'll make an announcement about um um about that but yeah that's still uh uh in in progress at the moment but um okay but yeah but people should look out um yeah for for those we're not not many like just like four shows i think running up to it but um just yeah. you know while we're over it made sense to uh to to play a few other cities too so um yeah of course so yeah so That's looking great. forward to that yeah mm. okay um i know that you had mentioned how one of the bands that you've listened to that really turned you on was uh, was mets and they're actually playing the following night yeah are, are yes. you gonna try to stick around and see them well uh yes um but we have i mean i've we've the logistical side of this band now is is, is quite complicated these days with you know everyone's got work and sure. there's uh steve steven's got um uh a young kid uh and flights back from from dallas i guess it would be i've mm -hmm. looked back and it's 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 a bit fiddly getting back to london and we might need to leave on the saturday which would mean that we would miss we would miss mets but that's that's if we need to get back for work on the monday which i think i think i do i've uh, i've rinsed my uh <laughs> my holiday allowance for this year <laughs> yeah. um so yeah but we, we did um we did a short tour with Mets a few years uh, in 2019 uh some UK shows with them before and so I'm sure they'll I'm sure they won't remember <laughs> us no <laughs> they, no they're super they're super lovely guys but um we all just got a bit drunk and probably just bothered them quite a lot but <laughs> but they well, they were very they were very polite about it yeah um, yeah that happens uh, right yeah yeah of course um but uh but yeah I, I mean depending on the times well i still need to work it all out but i really hope we get to see them because um yeah yeah it would be great i mean I, I hope to to catch a lot of it i don't know how much i'm going to be able to catch uh i know mm -hmm. that we have to be in austin for sunday so mm -hmm. 
I'm thinking maybe we might stick around for Saturday. Um, but I, again, just like you, we're, we're, we're still kind of shooting in the dark right now too. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, uh, life getting in the way of, of everything. So <laughs> of all my good times, yeah, why can't I just have it. a good time? Everything has yeah, to be difficult. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. Hey, I, I just thought about it. Cause you just said that, um, I was like, what, um, when you first heard this record, you were already making music. Were you in USA Nails at the time that you heard this record? No. So this was, um, uh, so this would have been a few years before we formed USA Nails. And yeah, yeah. So I was already, I know when, when you mentioned about, oh, it should be an influential album, which is why I thought maybe I should go back further. But in terms of, in terms of like albums that really sort of had an impact on me or really stopped me in my tracks, this was, hmm. this is really like hard to, hard to think of another record that uh you know that really made me think about um you know my approach to sort of songwriting and it has i mean it, it at its heart it's kind of a great pop record um yeah uh, but it's kind of noisy and weird and has these very melodic and very hooky elements to it um right and uh i don't know i'd always kind of been a bit scared of melody and writing in normal time signatures and stuff but um <laughs> yeah but this i mean not not this album alone but um was is a real was a real like you know when you think you've you've heard a lot of sort of guitar pop and sort of punk bands from the 80s and you, you've heard it all and then and it's like wow they're still they're still really sort of fresh, interesting, original records that I haven't even heard from that time that mm. do really um, amazing and inspiring things with, uh, with music and words and like, yeah. So in that respect, it, it sort of made me, it was what it was. Yeah. Um, among many records when, when we sort of formed us, I mean, uh, Mets were, were a sort of big touch point as well. When, when we were getting together, USA Nails, when we were all sort of talking about, bands that we were listening to and stuff yeah um but for me i mean i feel like i try and somewhere between what adrian Borden does and maybe what uh lee ronaldo does is um maybe graham coxon from blur maybe but hmm. that sort of guitar playing that i don't know I'm I'm, I'm I'm trying to make a connection here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but, let me let me ask you the question. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you do? You think that you've kind of pulled anything away from from this record uh, that that like towards your your own songwriting process? Um, maybe not, maybe not process necessarily, but um, but definitely that the melody in it is is something that uh, I really enjoy. And it's something that I would maybe be a bit, a bit skeptical of music that was, you know, that had singing or like sort of melodies that you could hold on to. Um, mm. But it was definitely this record was definitely a record that made me think, no, you know what, we we can we can do this. We can introduce elements of melody and stuff into songs. It doesn't mean you've, you've sold out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I would say it, it definitely made me feel a bit more confident and a bit braver in terms of approaching sort of more melodic elements of songwriting. Definitely. Hmm. Okay, and because then, because then you started US US uh, Nails after that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So I mean, obviously Nails ha has that kind of, you know, that noise, rocky, that heavier element. But I like mm -hmm. to think, especially with the more latter albums, like there is there is more sort of melody and more layers of. Um, pop if you like i mean it's still pretty sure. noisy and a bit gnarly but yeah, but yeah. there are you know there's i like the idea of trying to incorporate th those sorts of melodic elements into quite a noisy band you know yeah um, no that's great and i think that that yeah. is you know uh kind of uh defining for what noise rock is like mm. it's just a different take on like what we already all know like one of the greatest examples I can think of, and and you know, the reason why I like noise rock music is because I lived in Providence, you know, in the late '90s and early 2000s, and there were so many noise rock bands, quote unquote, noise rock bands that were coming around and that were here, 
um, and one of them being Lightning Bolt. Mm. I'm sure I'm sure you're familiar. I, I yeah, I'm going to see them tomorrow night in London. Oh, sweet! So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a, a couple of uh, a couple of my friends' bands are doing a a collaboration uh, set um, as a support act. So I'm, yeah, I'm super excited about it. It's oh, be great. great! Well, if you mm. see either of the Bryans, tell them I say hello. Okay, <laughs> I will. <laughs> but uh, but that band, I love that band, and it's like you know, I've listened to the records like so much. Like being at the show was totally different because it was just so chaotic and noisy and loud that. You know, you couldn't really make too much out of it, just just being pummeled by sound. But listening to the records and like hearing what Brian Gibson can do on that bass with like guitar strings and bass strings mixed, mm. it was literally like of extremely fast, extremely loud, heavy metal music. Yeah, <laughs> like it's all heavy metal riffs that he's doing. I was like, mm. you know, like. That's essentially what it was. It was just like, okay, you're, you're just playing metal riffs, but you've done it in this different way that's not mainstream in a, in a, in a broad sense mm. and kind of turned that genre on its head. And they would never be considered heavy metal. There's yeah. no, I don't yeah. think that there would be metal heads that would listen to them being like, oh yeah, I can take this. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they definitely, yeah. So they sort of, yeah, it's quite, uh, I feel I feel a bit wanky using the word, but it's quite a sort of a postmodern approach, isn't it, to take something sure. like that and like directly reference it and then sort of just flip it around and just give it a different context, isn't it? Yeah, um, but that's what that's what yeah. we're doing. That's what it's all mm. about, really. I mean Yeah. Either that or do it or do something kind of more traditional, way better than the other band. That's that's pretty yeah. much all you all you can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Very true. Yeah. Cool, man. Hey, well, uh, Again, it's been a great honor speaking with you. Uh, if you see the Bryans, tell them I say hello. I will. Okay, and, uh, cool. And I'll get to see you in a, in a couple months from now. Great, yeah. Can't wait. Can't wait.